Assalamu alaikum. All right, so we understand the issue of uncertainty in our times. Well, what's the solution? In a word, the solution is striving for certainty or yaqeen. But how? Through education. This is the route that's encouraged in the Quran. Muslims have bought into so many different conflicting ideologies, mostly unknowingly, and have grown skeptical of Islam. We need a healthy amount of skepticism that is rooted in our tradition, with our scripture as the basis, as the foundation, and aimed at challenging all other man-made and conflicting ideologies. Sounds intense, I know. It is. Also, it's easier said than done. There are two tasks involved. Number one, learning what the Quran and the Sunnah have to say about any specific subject. And two, comparing and contrasting that with all other alternative explanations. As one Islamic scholar put it, we need to deconstruct the deconstruction. This is referring to the fact that Islam is exceedingly under the microscope, constantly being questioned, doubted, and even ridiculed. Going back now, the Quran encourages us to embark on a lifelong journey toward certainty, the road to which is paved with learning. This is a very natural and very human journey. We're looking for the truth. The Quran uses the word yaqeen in multiple contexts. Among them, ilm al the conviction that comes about from knowing something. As we discussed in the previous lecture, the previous video, due to the Nova effect, the many alternative lifestyles and choices, very few actually know anything. There's plenty of information out there, don't get me wrong, but how many people have an organized way, an organized system of processing all this information, deciphering right from wrong, good from better, and then making decisions and having certainty in their choice? Secondly, Ayn al the conviction that comes about when you see or observe something. Unfortunately, like we mentioned in the previous video, the previous lecture, very little around us has been designed to remind us of the divine and our ultimate purpose. As a side point here, and this is important, the natural world has been created by God as a sign of His existence, His ability, and His will. The modern man-made world, not so much. Thirdly, haq al which comes about from personal experiences. Personal spiritual experiences are meant to bring us closer to God. But today we obsess over a different type of experience. We watch movies for the experience. We travel for the experience. We spend tons of money on experiences. But we are obsessed with our individuality and believe that we can be happy if we just focus on ourselves and material experiences. We believe that we are self-sufficient and that we can buy experiences to make ourselves happy. We practically worship ourselves. Of course, the self is very unstable and thus not, not only can we not truly satisfy ourselves, but we're also constantly uncertain. Allah encourages us in the Quran to worship your Lord until what is certain, al yaqeen comes to you. This is Surah Al-Hijr, which is chapter 15, verse 99. Certainty or yaqeen in this verse refers to two things. Firstly, as scholars of exegesis, tafsir, point out, death, the inevitable end to our lives, is absolute and unavoidable. And understanding what life is all about is dependent on this. We will all die. Surely our worldview and our purpose in this life must take this fact into consideration. So Allah is encouraging us to worship Him and to remain steadfast and committed to our deen, our values, our principles for as long as we are alive. Secondly, Allah is saying that worshiping Him leads to certainty. This would explain why Islam includes daily, regular rit rituals or ibadah. This is meant to facilitate stability and spiritual grounding in our lives as well as intellectual certainty and emotional tranquility. So don't underestimate the significance of learning how to pray correctly. Learning new du'as or supplications, fasting, giving charity, reading and reflecting the verses of the Qur'an. And most, most importantly, make sure you know who and why you worship. In a nutshell, if the problem is that the modern secular world has attempted to remove God from our lives, how best to resist that than to worship God daily? I'll see you very soon, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum.